Hello, welcome to another uh, Thursday night session for our navigation problem. Um, and in this section, we're gonna talk about mnemonic chart problems, mnemonic chart problems. These are problems that you're gonna see at um, on your navigation problems exam at the oceans level and, and probably only the oceans level. So if you're studying for that, hopefully this will be useful for you. Uh, at any time, leave a question in the uh, chat box over to the right, I'll be happy to answer it. And uh, we're gonna start with a little discussion and then we're gonna solve four problems. If you look down in the video description block uh, beneath this video, you should find a couple of links and then also um, the four problems that we're going to solve. So that'll avoid me having to type them out for you in the chat box. OK, so uh, mnemonic chart problems. First, a couple of uh, trivia points to get to. Uh, there's a difference between what's called a rum line and a great circle. Right. The rum line, first of all, is not the line you get in at the bar while you're waiting for your drink. It's spelled uh, like this, R-H-U-M-B. And um, the best way to think about a rum line is that if you were navigating on your traditional, you know, Mercator projection chart, a Mercator projection chart, it's gonna cover an area of, you know, 40 or 50 miles. And any straight lines that you draw on here are gonna be the fastest point between those, fastest way between any of those two points. More specifically, if you were navigating on a globe, if you believe in that kind of thing, then um, a rum line is when you intersect all of the meridians or the lines of longitude at the same angle, right? So let's say you started out down here and you intersected the meridian at a 45 degree angle, and then you do it as well up here, 45 at all of these. You'll notice that by the time you get up to the pole, you start kind of making a little bit of a curve and if you viewed it from above, from the top down, you would actually see like a weird little curve as you kind of circle the Earth. It's called a loxodromic navigation. And there's a link to that in the video description below. So if you want to open up a new tab and check out a better drawing than I can do about loxodromic navigation, uh, that's rum line stuff. And so the point is on a small area, a large scale chart of a small area, rum lines are great. They're just straight distances between two places. But if you're trying to cross an ocean and you set your course to 045, you're eventually going to end up at the North Pole, believe it or not. You're just going to spin your way around the globe. You're probably going to run aground first, of course. But um, hey, welcome from Scotland there, Alistair. That's great. Um, so that's a rum line, and that's kind of our typical navigation. But when we're in navigation problems, we're generally traversing a pretty big part of the ocean. We're going to be doing great circle navigation. And so if you were to take a globe, the Earth, and take a lightsaber and cut it right down the middle so that it hit the center of the earth, the path that is traced on the outside, on the crust of the earth, is called a great circle. It's the quickest way between any two points on a globe. And if you've ever taken a long haul flight and you're looking at a map, you probably see a projection like that. And you may wonder, you know, if you're, if you're flying from California to Europe, why do you go over Greenland? It doesn't kind of make sense if you look at a if you look at a, a Mercator projection, that straight line goes nowhere near Greenland. But in a great circle, the fastest way to get there is kind of dipping a little bit to the north and uh, making this kind of curved path. It's only curved, though, because you're looking at it on a Mercator projection chart, right? So it's all a matter of how you look at it. If you were to blow up a globe in front of you, the straight line is going to make the most sense. It's a great circle route. So rum lines good for short distances. Uh, the definition of it, if you're curious, is crossing meridians at the same angle. So 45 degrees or something all the way up. Great circle is good for large distances. Um, but when we talk about great circles, there's a couple of points to, to know on the great circle. So first of all, you're going to start at some place, and that's going to be your origin, right? So your origin on a great circle. And then you're going to end at some place, and that's going to be called your destination. That's fine. But there's another point in the middle another point in the middle. And this point right here is called the vertex. And when we when we solve great circle problems mathematically, a lot of the Coast Guard problems are from um, solving for the vertex. So that's interesting as well. So welcome there, 10th man from California. Happy to have you there. Um, I used to live in Alameda and also Crescent City, California. So nice. Um, so the vertex of this uh, route here, the definition of the vertex is the most poleward point on the route. And so an easier way to think about that is the highest latitude. 
So the highest latitude you ever see on a great circle route is called the vertex. And it, it's different points depending on the route that you're taking. So mathematically, we're solving for like, where is that vertex? Why do we want to know that? Well, if you're traversing, yeah, from say like uh, Japan to California, you're going to go up into the Bering Sea. And if you're not prepared to go up to that latitude and that, you know, weather up there, then you're going to be in a world of hurt. So knowing where the vertex is will allow you to make some decisions about where you sail. The other kind of point that I want to talk about is what if there was a big, you know, like land mass here? On a plane, that's fine, assuming you have permission to fly in their airspace. But for a ship, you can't you can't go there. You're going to see that big white career expiration light flashing as you do that. So what you may do instead is you may sail this way and then do a great circle route. And so this is this is what's called composite sailing or composite sailing. And we did a little bit of that in a previous session. We talked about parallel sailing, where you just steam like due east or due west. And then you you um, can take the great circle route for the rest of it. So the great circle saves you time and fuel. Um, but if you can't do it because of some obstructions or for whatever reason, you can do some composite sailing where you're parallel sailing and then doing some great circle stuff. All right. We're going to get to the mnemonic charts, believe me. But this is just a couple of uh, preliminary things you need to know in order to solve these problems. The next thing to talk about, and this is fairly quick, is uh, just chart projections in general. I think they're still free. I think you maybe charges for some of the videos now, but uh, there's a good video if you want to check out that. Um, but anyway, two different projections that we commonly use sailing. One is Mercator projection. And the way that Mercator projection works is that if you take your globe and you were to put like a projector on the inside of the globe at the center of the earth, like a little light projector or something, and then you wrapped the chart around the globe, like a cylinder around the chart, around the globe, and you then projected things out, you're gonna see, you know, the further north you get, the more distortion you get in that chart, right? And so what you end up seeing when you unroll that chart is down at the equator and down where the point of tangency is called, um, where the point of tangency is, I'll just write that word for you there, tangency. Where the point of tangency is, the chart is the most accurate that it can be for a Mercator projection chart. The further you get away from that point of tangency, the more distortion there is in the chart. And so if you've seen these charts of like the entire world and you look at Greenland and you look at Africa, they look to be the same size. They're not. Africa is like 14 times bigger or something. But it's because of that distortion as you project the image of the Earth, which is a sphere, onto a flat surface. That's not the only way to do it. You know, typically that's how we get these Mercator projection charts, right? By projecting it that way. And on a chart that's 50 miles big, the, the distortion is minimal. It's not going to be a big deal at all. However, if you um, were to take a different method, what you can do is instead of projecting it onto a cylinder, what if you projected that image onto a flat plane, like a flat piece of paper, right? So it passes out through the earth and it goes onto the paper in different ways. And you're gonna have, you're always gonna have some distortion, but this distortion is different. Instead of preserving things near the point of tangency, this preserves great circles, right? So a, no, a mnemonic chart, once you do the projection, is gonna look a little bit weird. But the nice thing about a mnemonic chart is a straight line on a mnemonic chart is a great circle route. So with just one straight line, you can know what the fastest point, the fastest path is between two points on the globe. And so here's a here's a mnemonic chart. I'll just show you the Atlantic Ocean mnemonic chart, right? So take a look at the United States, at Africa, at Europe. They're all distorted in this weird way, right? But um, the benefit is that a straight line on here is a great circle, right? So it's a great circle. So you could take those points off this chart transfer them to your chart plotter, your ectus, um, or whatever, and then you could have a, a great circle route that way. All right. So give me just one sec. I'm going to set up the board here, and then we're going to look at the Pacific Global Sailings chart, and we're going to solve a few problems based on that one. Doing chart work by live stream is always tricky, so um, let me know if you have any questions there in the comment block there, or in the chat box.
All right, so this is the best way that I came up with to, to do this on YouTube anyway. Now, the nice thing about these projection charts is you don't actually need to plot on them. You're gonna answer some qualitative questions about them, right? So they're just gonna be questions about different things that you can see on these charts. However, um, I've got some magnets that I'll use when they talk about a position on these problems. I'll plot it on here with a magnet so you can kind of get a sense of, of what's happening um, and get an idea of, of how you would use these. These are about $30 or $40 a piece um, US if you were to order them for yourself. So um, I don't think you need to order them to study. Like if you watch this video and then you get into the test room for the Coast Guard exam, um, you can spend a couple minutes just looking at the chart and remembering a few things. All of the questions are going to be qualitative. Like maybe you need to put a couple plots on there, but you're not going to be doing some substantial um, chart work. So, okay, Dennis, very good. Happy to have you from Russia there. And uh, hopefully this helps you. Um, you'll notice this chart is old, right? It's still got the USSR on there. It's still got some, you know, American territories out there as well. So, okay. So, um, Couple of key points on this chart. You'll notice that there's this weird distortion, right? These are lines of latitude here, lines of latitude, right? And then the lines of longitude tends to spread out as they get further down there, right? So there's weird distortion, but if you were to take your, uh, your chart roller here, any straight line on here is gonna be a great circle route. And so that's, that's handy, it's useful stuff. John from Michigan, thanks and uh, welcome. Happy to have you there as well. All right, so a couple of points that are common in the Coast Guard exams when they try and give you these answers. Um, one thing you'll notice is that if you were sailing like an equatorial route, right, the equator actually is a great circle, right? So sailing along the equator, even though it's a rum line, it's also a great circle. So there's no real difference there. And anytime you're sailing along a line of latitude, you're parallel sailing. So the closer you get to the equator, the less useful this stuff is, um, right? So sometimes they're gonna give you some answers about stuff at the equator and generally you can throw that out. The other thing that's important to note is that lines of longitude are also great circles. That's the definition of longitudes, um, right? So if you were ever sailing from say the Bering Sea to Hawaii, you're going straight south, that is a great circle route. So you're not gonna save anything by using one of these charts. The best savings you're going to have is when you're kind of cutting across a lot of different um, lines in here. And you'll see that in the problem. So I just wanted to point that out. So Alex, let's see. So navi ocean navigation. Yeah. If, if you uh, are traveling a big distance, this is when you're going to want to use it. Um, but it's not, it's not like you're going to be plotting your position on this chart. What you would use it for is a planning chart. So for my journey from Japan to Seattle, what I would do when I first start my journey is I would look at this chart, I would lay out the track here, and I would mark off, you know, five or six points, we'll say. So we start there, and I'm just going to mark off a few points with my pencil and, um, and all that. So now that's a great circle route. What I would do is I would take each of these points and I would put it on my Mercator projection chart for the smaller um, area, right? And then it'll trace that big arc on the Mercator chart or on a chart plotter. So these are really planning charts. So you're exactly right. It's not something that I would be putting my position on every day at noon, but rather a planning technique um, to get there. So great question, Alex. You're exactly correct there. Okay, so let's take a look at the first problem. I think that's the best bet. And so if you go down into the video description, down below, you should see four problems in there. You might need to expand it a little bit to see. And the first problem reads, on which voyage would a great circle track provide a significant savings in distance to steam when compared to a rum line track? So just for words, what they mean by steam is traveling, right? So we're not traveling on steamships anymore, but it's just um, a, a method of talking about traveling a distance. And so rum lines, right, that was the straight line. A uh, great circle on a Mercator chart is curved, but on this chart is straight. And so uh, remember I cautioned you that things along the equator or things straight up and down a line of latitude, there's no real difference there. So looking at the answers, Valdez to the Marquesas Islands. There is Valdez, and here is the Marquesas Islands, right? So if you look at that, you see, okay, you're pretty much going like straight south, 
straight south along a, a meridian. You're not transiting a large amount of longitude. So therefore, this is going to have no real effect um, on a on your journey. Just seem a straight line. You're not going to save anything by using one of these great circle route chats, charts. San Francisco to Kodiak. So here's San Francisco. Here is Kodiak. I lived there for two years. That was great. And so this, this is a potential answer to the question. And I guess I should say, too, the other way to solve these questions this is, is just to eliminate three answers and then choose the last one that makes sense. I, I would recommend you do that every time you do this. So this is a great circle, but it's a very short distance. It's a very short distance. You're just transiting the, the Gulf of Alaska. You're not covering a significant portion of the globe. So I'm thinking no on this one, but I'll keep it in the back of my mind, right? Because it kind of does meet the criteria, but it's just a short distance. The third one is Christmas Island, which is there, to Singapore, which is off the chart, but it says um, via three degrees north, 126 east. So here's three degrees north, and here's 126 east. So in essence, they're, you're steaming along the equator or just above it. So will that provide a, quote, significant savings in distance compared to the run line? No, it won't. It won't. Right? And then finally, Guam to Seattle. So Guam is there in the Marianas Islands. Seattle is up in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Um, and then it says via 4730-125-30. All they're getting at there is that Seattle is inside the area. Here's 4730, um, et cetera. So what about this one? It's a big distance over the surface of the earth. It is not along the equator or a meridian up and down. It cuts across a significant amount of um, longitude lines. So yes, in this case, um, the great circle route is gonna save you a significant mileage distance over just steaming a, um, a rum line. All right, so by process of elimination, we get to choice D there. And these problems are all, you know, all just like that. I think there's 15 or so questions for the Pacific chart, 15 questions for the Atlantic chart. You're going to see um, one, of, one of them on your oceans exam for sure. Okay, so the next one um, down in the, in the video description there, you're on a voyage from Nome to Honolulu via Unimac Pass. Okay, so Nome is in Alaska up there. Honolulu is in the Hawaiian Islands there, and it says you're transiting via Unimac Pass. Unimac Pass is a famous opening in the Aleutian Island chains of Alaska. A lot of ships going from California to Japan or China will transit Unimac Pass specifically for this reason, because it's like perfectly lined up for a great circle route. But anyway, this is the point that they're saying. You're going from Nome to the Hawaiian Islands via Unimac Pass. What do you notice about this? It's almost straight up and down, right? You follow this line of longitude down and, and there's only a very little bit of distance there. Let me actually put it on Oahu there. Okay, so um, it tells you to use mnemonic chart, Whiskey, Oscar, X-Ray, Zulu, Charlie, 5270. That's what this is, so that's good. And uh, determine which answer is true. The great circle distance is 2,013 miles. That is irrelevant information in this problem, so we can discard that. So which answer is true? Choice A, the great circle track results in a significant savings when compared to a rum line. Is that true? No, because you're transiting pretty much up and down um, longitude lines. So you're not going to have a significant savings in distance there. Choice B, the northern vertex of the Great Circle track would lie between Unimac Pass and Nome. This is really tricky on them, right? So if this is your if this is your Great Circle route, and we said earlier that uh, Great Circle routes have a vertex, the definition of the vertex was the most poleward point on a Great Circle route, or the highest latitude. And um, What's tricky about this is you're like, okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. The vertex would be somewhere up here, but since it's an up and down or a longitude line, the vertex is actually at Nome. So it's not between Nome and Unimac Pass, it's it's at Nome. So that's a tricky answer. I don't like that question for them, but, uh, but it's on there. Choice C is that the distance of the Great Circle track is measured by using the length of a degree of latitude at the mid-latitude of the track. That sounds fancy. It sounds like something you would read out of Bowditch. It's nonsense. Um, it's literally nonsense what they're what they're saying there. What they're trying to refer to is um, 
previously we did some we did some sailings. I think it was um, mid latitude sailings we did a couple weeks ago, right? And the point there was like at this latitude, say 10 north, and at this latitude, 20 north, since longitude lines converge at the pole, they're going to be different distances, right? And you need to account for that mathematically when you're doing it. Like up at the North Pole, the difference between two longitude lines is going to be infinitesimal. Down at the equator, it's going to be big. So, um, so that's kind of what they're getting at, but even the words that they say don't even make any sense because it wouldn't be the distance of a great circle track measuring the length of a degree of latitude. It would be the length of a degree of longitude at a given latitude. So Alex, you're, you're, you're straight there. These are tricksters. Um, my running joke, I was in the Coast Guard. They're always uh, trying to trick you. Um, they're just trying to make sure you understand the concepts. So um, luckily you're gonna see that phrase on probably half the problems that you take as a distractor one, and it's never right. So if you ever see that, you can you can always call it a, right, a wrong answer, a wrong answer. All right, and so by process of elimination, choice D is correct, but let's see. The Great Circle course would offer um, no significant advantage because the rum line is close to 180 degrees. Yep, and that's that's exactly true. It's the exact opposite of choice A, which we said that's why choice A was wrong. So choice D is gonna be the correct one there. All right, so that's two problems. Let's uh, let's do another one. We're doing good on time here. So you are planning a voyage from Seattle, and it gives you the latitude and longitude of Seattle. And you're heading to where time? 44 North, 161 East. All right, so I know it's tricky to see in the camera. Up here are all the longitudes, and then they kind of spread out. So our longitude was going to be... Um, 161 east. So here's 161 east. And the latitude of that one is uh, 44 north. So we're going to be right about there. And this is a tricky one. You may actually have to plot pencil and tools on this chart for this question because um, because you're going to see that it gets close. Uh, John, John, the answer uh, to your question there, which specific phrase? Uh, choice C in problem two, the distance of the great circle track is measured by using the length of a degree of latitude at the mid-latitude. That phrase you'll see on quite a few of these answers. It's always wrong for mnemonic problems um, or something similar to it. So if you look at like problem four that we're going to do tonight, very similar to that. So you can always ignore that. They're just trying to confuse you. Okay, so this is a great example of a, of a great circle route. You're leaving Seattle. You're at latitude, you know, 46 or something like that. You're arriving at latitude 44 out here. What is the great circle route you would take? You wouldn't think that you'd have to go up to Alaska, but you, but you do, right? So the great circle route is going to be just like that, just like that, right? And so you end up way up by the Aleutian Islands. They do allow you to draw on the test. Yep, exactly. Yep. So you don't have to bring your own charts. They'll have them for you. All right. And uh, so just like any of these problems, we're going to read all the answers and then by process of elimination, get rid of them. So choice A, you must plot a composite or a composite sailing to remain south of the Aleutians. It's tricky, but if you start at the origin and end up at your destination, I know it's hard to see on the uh, on the video camera here, but you end up just south of the Aleutian Islands, just south of the Aleutian Islands. So you don't have to do any composite sailing. You're gonna you're gonna stay south of the Aleutians just barely, but uh, so that's why that answer is wrong. Uh, choice B: the northern hemisphere vertex lies to the west of your arrival position. If you think for just a minute, what was the definition of the vertex? The vertex is the most poleward point on this trip or the highest latitude you get to. So what we can do is we can say, all right, what's the highest latitude we get to? I'm looking at this curve here, and this is a, you know, a, a latitude of um, looks like 45, 50. The highest we get is like right around there, I would say. So the highest latitude looks to be about 53 degrees on the chart, 53 degrees. And it's a great circle route. So we start at like, you know, 47, we end at 44, but we get all the way up to 53. It's a pretty significant um, 
curve on a Mercator chart, but it's a straight line on a mnemonic chart. So the northern hemisphere vertex lies to the west of your arrival position. No, that's not true. So here's our arrival position, and here's the west. So uh, that choice is out because it lies directly between the two points. It's not always, it's not always in the exact center. I know it looks that way in this case, but um, but there is a difference if you were to measure it out. So it's not always the the center point. Um, so sea sailing on a mnemonic chart, the vertex won't always be the same as the origin or destination. If you're sailing, like say with these green dots here, if you were sailing that route, the origin would be the vertex, right? Um, the northern vertex, uh, the most poleward point. But on a uh, on a mnemonic chart, the definition of the vertex is going to be the most poleward or the highest latitude. And so along this straight line, the highest latitude we get to is 53 or so. So yeah, it's a great question. And uh, mathematically, maybe we'll do it next week or the week after, we'll solve some vertex problems and you, you'll see some trickery that they throw at you there as well. But on the mnemonics, the easiest way to think about it is the, the highest latitude you get to on your journey is the vertex. All right, choice C, military exercises north of 53 between 150 and 165 will not affect your voyage. All right, here's another tricky one, right? So um, 150 and 165 longitude. So here's 150, here's 165, right? And we said that our, our vertex was around 52, 53 degrees. Um, so it's a, it looks like you might get close to those military exercise areas, but this is where I was saying, you might need to actually draw it on the chart. If you draw the line 53 degrees north latitude between these longitudes, you'll find that the, the, the great circle route or the vertex lies below it, more to the south. So you miss it by 60 or 70 miles. Um, it looks close on this chart, but that's a pretty significant distance. So um, military exercises in that area will not affect your voyage. Now that said, some folks on uh, Navy ships maybe don't know the most about navigation, right? So um, you wanna stay clear for sure. Just kidding, just kidding. And then choice D, at your highest latitude, the sun will be visible at upper and lower transit uh, if the voyage occurs on 21 June. This is also distractor information. They're just trying to confuse you with like celestial slash oceans stuff. Um, yep, um, BMC, the... Uh, the great circle does bisect the center of the earth. That's exactly right. Yeah, if you took the lightsaber and cut right through the middle of the earth, then uh, you would have a great circle in any direction that you sliced, for sure, as long as it goes through the middle. So this last answer is um, is a little bit of trickery. And in essence, what they're saying, if you're looking at it, is, um, you know, 21 June, what are they getting at there? That's called the, the summer solstice, the longest day of the year. So something celestial is going on then. And they want to know if you can, in essence, see the sun all day long, right? So the upper transit, each day when the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, you see it kind of do that. And the highest point that it reaches is called upper transit. If you could see the whole, um, like some stars you see at night, right? Particularly in northern or southern latitudes, you see the whole path that it takes. So there's upper transit and there's lower transit. And what they're getting at with this question is um, in the middle of summer, the longest day of the year, if you're if you're at your vertex latitude 52 or 53, will you see the sun all day long? Where will you see the sun all day long, I guess, is what we should know. And that's going to be above the Arctic Circle. The Arctic Circle is at a latitude of like 66 and two thirds degrees, I think. Um, anyway, it's way up there and it's on the chart too. Arctic Circle is there. So to rephrase question D, then um, what they're saying is, are you going to pass above the Arctic Circle? And no, you're not going to. So that one's out. So choice C is going to be the correct one there. All right. So just a couple questions on the chat there. For, um, for sextants, uh, the one that I use on all my videos is an Astra 3B. But um, I really recommend the Davis plastic sextants if you're starting out on this stuff. Um, they're perfectly good um, and they get they get the job done and they don't break the bank either. Um, yeah, and uh, and John, 
Yeah, I mean, we were in the service together, so uh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about there. I guess my favorite, my favorite sea story about the Navy, and like they do a great job at what they do. The Navy's job is to keep the the sea lines of communication and commerce free for our for our country or whoever countries they belong to, right? Um, we had this submarine. We were doing escorts of the submarine, right? So they came in from the ocean, and we took them down to Bangor, Washington, to protect them as they came in, and they popped up in the wrong lane. So they popped up in the outbound lane of, of uh, Puget Sound. So it was great. So I think they do a great job of what they do. Navigation, you know, eh, not so much. And of course, I'm kidding. Like there's some serious navigators in the uh, in the Navy. And um, every time a Coast Guard ship goes through what's called TISTA or Tailored Ship Training Availability, you often have a Navy evaluator come on and you learn so much from them. So yeah, just uh, some, some good fun there between the, the services, but... I had to say it, right? That's how it works. Okay, question number four. You're planning a voyage from Portland to Korea via 44 North 155 East. So Portland is there, and Korea is over here, and it says via um, 44 North 155. So here's 45 North and 155. So it would be about there. And all they're, all they're saying that for is to make sure you don't run aground. Like they're showing you that this is somewhat of a composite route, but um, good to know. All right, which, um, which statement is true, I think is what they say. You can sail a great circle track between the two locations. Can you, like, can you just sail that great circle track? It looks to me like you're gonna run straight into both Alaska and Kamchatka um, up there as well as um, Northern Japan. So unless you wanna lose your career, I would not sail the Great Circle route between those two, where you're gonna run aground at least three times. So that's out. The vertex of the Great Circle route is north of the Aleutian Islands. Okay, so that's another one, just like the last problem. Um, if this is the Great Circle route between these two points, right? We're not going, we're not going here, we're going between these two because it gave you that point. It's just south of the Aleutian Islands again, just south of the Aleutian Islands. So just looking at um, the answers very carefully, that's why they gave you this VF44-155. Um, choice C, distance is measured in 60 mile segments using the length of a degree of latitude. Always nonsense on these mnemonic problems, so you can always ignore that one. And then finally, you can steam 270 degrees true at latitude 52, between 149 and 160 in a composite. Okay, that's a little tricky, but let's plot those positions here. 149 west and 52 north. So 52 north, 149 west is like there. And the second one is uh, 160 west and 52 north. Also 50 north, 160 west. And so what they're saying is if you were to do a composite or a composite sailing, can you go between those two points without hitting ground? And, uh, and you can. There's no obstacles in there. It's actually really close to Albatross Banks, which has amazing fishing. Um, but yeah, there's no obstructions between those two points. And so if you wanted to sail this route, you could do a great circle route between these two, You know, do parallel sailings between these two points a great circle here, and then you'd have to navigate your way through the Japan main islands to get there um, successfully as well. So that gives you a, a flavor of the questions you're gonna see. They're all just like that. You know, it's, it's either gonna try and ask you about going up and down or near the equator, or they're gonna ask you like, are you north of the Aleutians or south? The Atlantic chart, you know, I'll, I'll call that one up real quick. Is, uh, is very similar to the Pacific one. Right? They're going to ask you questions about like ice out here. Um, can you sail? Can you sail from New York to like Sweden? No, definitely not. You're going to run aground if you go New York to Sweden, I guess, or there's Sweden. You're going to run aground like four or five times. So they're all, they're all just kind of qualitative questions about these charts. Um, on your exam. And you will see one on your oceans, so just be ready for it. Like I say, I don't think you need to buy these to study from. If you review this video and then in the classroom when you look at the chart, 
you'll understand uh, how it works um, and go from there. So in the meantime, before I sign off tonight, I'll, uh, if there's any questions, just send them in the in the chat window there, and I'll do a quick summary. We talked about a couple things. We talked about rum lines, which are um, straight lines on a Mercator chart. You know, your typical typical chart that you're navigating on, Mercator projection. Uh, rum lines are crossing lines of longitude or meridians at the same angle. We talked about great circle routes, which are uh, if you chop the earth in half with a lightsaber through the middle, uh, the, the path that the crust and the burned part is going to take is a great circle. And it's the fastest uh, way between any two points on a sphere, on a globe. Um, we talked about some definitions about great circle routes, the vertex being the most poleward or the most uh, the highest latitude on a route. And um, then we went on to projections. The Mercator projection is a, you know, it's a globe projected onto a cylinder. A, gr a great circle route or a gnomonic projection is a globe projected onto a plane. And the advantage to this is a straight line on a gnomonic chart is a great circle route. So if you were trying to cross, um, you know, the Atlantic between Cape Hatteras and Northern Africa, you could just draw a straight line and then you transfer all these points over to your chart plotting software or to a Mercator projection chart and you can create the fastest way between these two points. And then finally, we mentioned um, some of your Coast Guard your US Coast Guard questions that you're gonna see, they're all qualitative. The ones in the video description are just like what you'll see on your exam. Um, always rule out three answers and whatever you're left with should make sense and, and go from there. So mnemonic projection, hopefully a pretty easy topic if you're studying. Um, hey, Archibald, welcome. You're welcome, Alistair, happy to do that. And then, uh, yeah, Alex on the ectus, um, that's exactly right, yeah. So you know, the Actus is going to do this for you most of the time, but for, for exam purposes, um, you know, in the old day, which is not that old, not that long ago, you would, if I was taking, like, when I was on the big tall ship, the Eagle, we went over to Europe and we did this. We, we put the straight line over and then we took like five or six of those points and we put them into our um, Mercator projection charts. And so we changed course, you know, every two days or so. We started off heading northeast and then we changed course to the southeast, um, even though on this type of chart, you're going to go straight. So, so you're welcome. Uh, happy to help. And then, yeah, sea sailing, the Latin long on the, the chart is a little tricky to see, I know, projecting it up here. But in essence, these uh, curved lines here are latitude lines, and they're all labeled. So if, if you kind of zoom in on it um, in real life, like with your eyeballs, you'll see that they're labeled pretty clearly and you're able to get a latitude and longitude pretty easy if you need to. Um, and then, yeah, every, every question they're going to give you is like a whole, it's going to be like 161.00 or 161.30. So really with these magnets, like you can, you can estimate just fine um, to the level of accuracy that you need. When we did the Aleutian Islands one, you know, you got to be a little precise there, but you can definitely, it's always going to be like on one of the grids or or halfway between a grid, a gridded answer. So, uh, yeah, I, said, I know it's hard to see on the video, but um, sea sailing there. Yeah, you, if you were looking at the chart in real life, you'd have no problem doing it. So all good to go. Okay, guy, you're welcome. Yeah, so, um, sorry, I'm not sure on the pronunciation. Jan, I'm guessing. Uh, if if it's a vertex for a mnemonic chart south of the equator, the most southern point, that's exactly right. Yeah, so the definition is going to be the most uh, poleward. So whichever whichever pole you're closest to, and otherwise known as the elevated pole. The elevated pole, if you're in the northern hemisphere, is the north pole. If you're in the southern hemisphere, it's the south pole. And uh, so for U.S. Coast Guard exams, there's only these two charts to deal with but they make charts for all four ocean basins. So uh, yeah, you're exactly right. If you were in the Southern hemisphere, the vertex is gonna be the closest point to the South Pole. If you cross the equator, that's a, another point, um, you, have to do, you have to do two calculations, right? Because first of all, the charts don't really cover that much of the Southern hemisphere in this one. And likewise, the Southern hemisphere charts don't cover much of the Northern hemisphere. But anytime you're doing the math about great circle routes, you generally have to solve uh, solve it in two steps. So very good. All right, Joseph, you're welcome. Thanks for watching. All right, if there's uh, if there's no other questions, I'll sign off here, and then this video will be available um, on the site. 
And uh, we'll be back at it next week, Thursday, same time, uh, 1900 Eastern Daylight Time. We'll do some more navigation problems. If you've got suggestions on what topics to cover, um, feel free to let me know. We've got a good amount done at this point, and I guess we're around halfway through the semester. Um, probably going to go most of the way through uh, through April and into May. So you can tune in from there. BC Masa. Okay, great. I've seen you before. So yeah, thanks for the help there. And then uh, Dr. Mo. Yeah, good question. <laughs> so they're, they're actually pretty progressive in terms of um, getting to electronic charts like in real life for navigating. So they've got some memos out there that says you can go completely paperless on your bridge um, if you have an approved ECTIS or electronic chart display and information system, an approved one. For testing purposes, we're still we're still on the paper stuff, yeah. So I would imagine it's gonna go away eventually, but um, for testing purposes, we're still doing tides and currents, we're still doing set and drift, um, course to steer, all that stuff on, on paper and hand calculations. So great question. Um, I think it's fun, but uh, yeah, in terms of real usefulness, not as much anymore, so good. Okay. Sounds good. All right. You're welcome, everybody. And thanks for tuning in. And uh, I'm going to sign off now. Have a good day.